We're at our favourite place again. Get him, Reg. Get him, Chance. Get him. Get him. We've got some sunlight. Welcome along to the vlog, ladies and gents. We're just partaking of the morning ritual, which has become a new thing for 2022. I can honestly say, I'll be the first person walking around here this morning, that's for sure. Now, the wind's gonna pick up on the lake a little bit, but all week we've been walking in the reverse direction and today we're going the opposite way around so I thought I'd grab a shot of the scenery from this direction before we shoot off home and uh, go to work to start on the brewery control panel all right thank you very much oh no there's a jogger over there but you can't see him oh you can welcome to the brewery <laughs> Oh my goodness, folks. Oh, we've got a lot to do because that is not suitable for brewing on at the moment. Of course, there is no control panel. So I'm going to have to pull my finger well and truly out of wherever it's been and get this whole thing rigged up and working. A-S-A-P So we've got the top of the, the control panel, I was going to say CP Same thing, top of the control panel chopped off And this is the most important part of the whole control panel I'm, I would argue Because of course it is switching the elements And that's the whole idea behind this Otherwise we'd just use rotary switches on the wall so this time around, I'm making sure that we have the best contact possible with the solid state relays and the heat sink. So each relay has got each hole tapped. So we've gone to the trouble of tapping each hole. That one's going to be a bit tight there, look. So hopefully they all fit nicely. That's going to be a bit tight on that side as well. No bother, we'll figure it out. And then also, I'm going to put some heat transfer paste on there. And then get it all mounted into the top of the control box. And hopefully that will give us enough protection moving forward. I don't want these bad boys to burn out. At 200 quid a pop for the proper ones, they're not the kind of thing that you want to be going bang every week. And then I've drilled and tapped... All of these holes which took me ages, 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 holes. I only snapped one drill bit, which is in there, which is a blind hole, and I can't get it out. But fortunately, it's deep enough for these M4 bolts to go in and just grab and bite that side. But that's only holding the heatsink onto the top of the panel. 
we've got six bolts doing that that's more than enough and then four bolts each on each solid state relay you can't be a chicken cup of soup with croutons courtesy of Clement's homebrew cheers Kevin so let's have a look then we have the thermal paste here she is made in the UK well isn't that nice to see and all of the M4 nuts have gone into place without me having to make any adjustments and indeed they have uh, tightened down nice and tight I don't know if you can see this now there's some distortion on the top of this resin on the relay this one not so much but there is some do you think that's heat damage from using it I mean it's only switching 19 amps it's rated for 50 even if I derate it for temperature the old heat sink never used to get above 70 degrees so I don't know I'm looking at this one you see that I think it'll be fine but who knows who knows and this one has got this solid top on and you can't take it off so I can't even have a look if it's potted inside or whatever else but yeah that's that heatsink populated then I've left the switching devices to the front as well so they're not going to be running alongside the power cables which I'll send to the back of the panel and along maybe in some of that trunking that I've got somewhere this open channel trunking and then I can just use single individual wires such as these they don't have to be double insulated because they're in a panel and then they'll also be in some trunking so it's kind of double insulated if not triple insulated anyway so the next job is to affix the heatsink to the top of said panel what do we think? What do we think? <laughs> so we've got some cable trunking, DIN rails, some loosely spaced PSUs and RCDs, mains in RCD, three, three phase in for the flex from the rotary isolators. We'll probably put three out on this side as well, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to work it yet I'd like them to be in a row at the back of the box if anything but we've got plenty of space so I could possibly work it like that and then just pull these three forwards this is the water and the signal cables and then I can send three main trunks out there one two Three. That looks like it's a smaller fitting. There we go. So that's the plan. So I'm going to take a photo of this so I remember how I've laid it all out. Water, water, and HLT lights. We could possibly put the HLT lights there. Could put the water there. That there. I think that looks neater, doesn't it? Then there's room for expansion should we need to utilise it. So I've just spent I've just spent over an hour drilling and installing all of these fittings. And I see I made a error on the spacing, but it's something we can live with. Then the reason I've put all this on here is so I can solder the cables up and put shrink wrap over them on the solder bench away from the panel and then we can just have flying leads which will buzz around into the power supplies or the relays wherever they need to go I've also installed a couple of buzz bars we've got a live and a neutral buzz bar and these are going to distribute power around the board to where they need to go and I'm thinking do I need to put a 12 and a 24 volt 
buzz bar in as well. Maybe not because we're going to be running maybe just one feed across to all this lot, and we can we can perhaps piggyback from one PID to the next. I forgot what they were called then. Also clipped a little bit of trunking in here as well. Just uh, in fact, it's just super glued on. I hope it's going to hold, but I think it'll just make the whole thing look a little bit tidier. And talking of tidy, well, my shop definitely isn't. <laughs> Fly leads. These I've got to cut that one yet. These will ultimately connect into the rotary isolators and provide power for the elements. So they come in here on their own separate line and then they're split into phases. So we've got the brown, we've got the grey and we've got the black, L1, L2 and L3. And they run across then into their own relevant RCDs and then out of the RCDs and up into the solid state relays. Now I could incorporate in here another stage which are some fast blow fuses to protect the solid state relays but I don't have them at the moment. I've not needed them up to now and with this better heat sinking and separating hopefully any transient voltages by using shielded cable for the signalling we won't have the solid state relays kind of flickering on and off in a kind of half-hearted don't know what I'm kind of doing state um, causing any issues there so hopefully this will be fine but uh, and I'm not familiar with the fast blow fuses that's probably the main reason but that's something else that we could put in here if we needed to. Um, that would be further protection for the components, not necessarily protection for us. The protection for us comes down to these RCDs here. And then we're going to come obviously out of this other side of the solid state relays, back down through all this cable trunking and out the panel. One thing I do have to incorporate, and it's going to be quite tricky to do, is the current transformers. Now the problem is, these things are big. Look at that next to the RCD. You know, next to a tape measure, to give you an idea. It's like having, there's one for each phase. So it's like trying to find somewhere for three tape measures to live. I think I'm going to pop them down here which is why I've tied up the phases like this then I can pull these phases up independently pop the current transformers around them and then hopefully because the current has to run through the center of these I can see this being one part of the build that makes a bit of a mess I might have a look if I can get some smaller current transformers but they need to be of this rating. I do have a smaller current transformer. Um, have I left it out? I was having a look at it earlier on. But unfortunately this is a 1 to 1000. So it's not the right rating for that particular panel meter. Alternatively I changed the panel meter but the panel meter is about 50 quid. So, it's one of those things, isn't it? How do I manage to monitor all phases and have those tucked away nicely so they don't look messy? Shall we mock it up and have a look what they'd look like? Yeah, why not? Well, that's kind of the best we can do if you look at it. So... We've got phase two there, phase one there, phase three there. Obviously I could jiggle them around a little bit so they're in sequence, but to be honest, once I've soldered this onto some uh, more cable and then connected it up onto here, it makes no difference really. Uh, it's a little bit of a bummer because, well, 
I used to have a current transformer which was a solid block like this and all the cables ran straight through the centre of it and that bolted onto the panel whereas these are designed for installation after the event which is why they, uh, they unclip so you can put them on and off as desired. I mean the best I can kind of do is to cut the trunk in and almost have them like oh, I can't really quite get this where I want it to be like get them in there like that and then have the trunk in run up to them and like almost block them in with the trunk in but the cables are in there it's making a it's wanting to push them out I don't know it's a shame because that's the only part of the build that's not going to look neat. Obviously, once all this trunking's all covered up, it won't be a problem. I could probably just use this main trunk in here for nothing other than... Well, I was going to say nothing other than the main lines and then run everything else down the bottom trunking, but that ain't going to happen because we're going to be coming out of the top of these buzz bars as well. So it's just a bit of a juggling act and yeah, I'm not happy. If we had one feed in, this wouldn't be a problem, but we don't. I've got three, the way that the whole shebang is set up, we've got three um, 32, I think, or 20, 25 amp feeds to the uh, each individual rotary isolator. Which means that at some point I have to pull all these cables through together like that. And I don't want to do away with the monitoring because that monitor was how I discovered that one of the solid state relays had gone in the first instance. So apart from the boil would have taken twice as long to get to temperature. That would have been an over, over indicator. But the fact that that was showing that there was some current missing... And I had two elements on which normally shows 38 amps and it was only showing 19. I knew then that there was something amiss. I originally thought an element had burnt out. But it turns out it was one of these bad boys which could have been a symptom of another issue. Like I showed you the other day. There were some burnt contactors, uh, connectors on the three phase connectors. So all that is distinct possibility and that they were related. But I don't want to do away with the panel meter. For that very reason, it is a really useful diagnostic tool, which I don't want to lose, frankly. Yeah, uh, who knows? I don't think it's all that bad. I mean, we could potentially have them all lined up along that back edge, like so. And just have them all down there. And try and you know kind of hook the cables from one to the next underneath each other but yeah they don't want to sit like that of course you see they want to sit in a concertina fashion like this I don't know I've also got some flexible trunking which fits inside the current transformers I did think about using that as well but again it's just not pretty couldn't leave it alone. Found one. Mounts on the DIN rail. Has the terminal, the wire connectors under these flaps look here. And each line runs through there individually. £21. Delivered tomorrow. Next working day. It is quarter seven. But I've just put the order through and it should be here tomorrow. So we'll be able to pick this up without much interruption. So I hope I've ordered the right one. As you can see, we've got 200 to 5. And this is indeed 200 to 5. 
So fingers crossed that gets rid of that real messy, horrible kind of bodge and uh, neatens it all up. So I think the fact that it's quarter to seven and my battery just said 14% remaining, that kind of gives me an indication that we're going to wrap up for today, boys and girls. I think it's been a productive day. We'll close the lid on it and we'll see you tomorrow when we continue the build. I better just turn this compressor off before I go home. Otherwise it'll start rattling all night. See you later folks. Have a good one. Catch you on the next one.